The Bitcoin network can only handle five transactions per second. The Ethereum network can handle 30 transactions per second, but in comparison, the Visa network can handle almost 2,000 transactions per second. The energy required to process one Bitcoin transaction can be used to power an entire house for a month. With that amount of power, Visa can process 600,000 transactions and Bitcoin, again, can only do one. Also, the whole Bitcoin network uses more energy per year than the whole country of Czech Republic. So can we really expect these cryptocurrencies to replace the financial system if they are so slow and so energy inefficient? 안녕하십니까? Nicolas입니다, and welcome to the episode number seven on this series where I'm trying to explain Bitcoin, crypto, blockchain, all that stuff for developers and newbies. If you like the way I explain things and you are enjoying this series so far, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. I would really, really appreciate it. On today's video, we are going to talk about the dark side of the crypto, blockchain, Bitcoin industry. What are the challenges, the risks, the scams, the energy waste, all that stuff. On the last video, I asked you to write on the comments what were your doubts, your skepticisms, your problems with the crypto industry. I took your comments, read them all, and I separate them in three categories. The first one is regulation. Basically, how can the government control Bitcoin? Can they ban cryptocurrencies? Can they do something to stop this? How are they going to do it? And actually, they're already doing that. Like, I don't know if you knew this, but if you buy Bitcoin today in a South Korean crypto exchange, you are going to be paying 15% above market price compared to a Weguk exchange. The second category was many people asking questions about scams. What happens if I give my money to a DeFi project and it gets hacked? What happens if the developers run away? What can I do to check if this coin is a scam or not? And the last section of the video is going to be dedicated to the technical challenges of this industry. So let's get started with regulation. The biggest question was, can the government regulate this? Will the government do something about it? What can they do? One thing they cannot do is ban crypto per se. You cannot ban Bitcoin. I mean, Bitcoin is just a network of computers talking to each other. If you want to literally ban crypto, ban a cryptocurrency, you have to turn off the internet. That's it. So it's going to be very hard to ban crypto, but the government doesn't have to do that. If you think about it, they don't. All they have to do is control the exchanges, which is what's happening here in South Korea. The government plus the banks only allow you to buy for certain exchanges that they control and they can verify and they can look inside of. If the government controls the exchange, then that means that the government controls who can buy crypto. So the government, again, doesn't really have to do anything with the currencies themselves. They just have to control the exchanges. Exchanges are single point of failure. If the government goes after the exchanges, they can literally stop you from buying crypto. Now, once you buy crypto, that's a different thing. It's very hard to control how you spend, move, convert your crypto. Crypto changes a lot of things that maybe governments are not ready to change yet. For example, how is the government going to collect taxes, let's say, on the profits of a DeFi yield farm? It's just not gonna happen. So it changes many things that the laws and banks and the offline world are not ready to deal with it. Also, many people were concerned on the comments about illegal stuff. People are using Bitcoin crypto to pay for illegal stuff and they don't get caught because it's sort of anonymous. That's a problem. Now, how are we gonna stop that? Maybe the answer will be to ban Bitcoin because Bitcoin is used for illegal payments. But just because something is used for something illegal doesn't mean we have to ban it. Like for example, I can eat with a knife. I can also do bad things with a knife, but we're not going to ban knives. The same thing with the internet. You can use the internet for good things and bad things. Doesn't mean you have to ban the internet. The same with Bitcoin. Also, in the government's defense, if you think about it, we maybe are not ready to live in a world where people are their own banks. I mean, when you work with crypto, when you have crypto, you become your own bank. You have to secure your keys. You own your wallet. You can do whatever you want with your money. You become a bank, your own bank. That gives you a lot of freedom, but also gives you a lot of responsibility. And we made some videos before of people that lost their crypto wallets and now they don't have that money. Nobody is going to help them recover the money because nobody can. It just doesn't happen. So do we really want to live in a world that if you lose your password, you are out of your money forever? Maybe we want to live in a world where even if I lose my password, I can go to the bank, show my face, my ID, and I know my money is there. 
So as you can see, it's not always black and white. There is a lot of grays on this area. Another huge problem, in my opinion, with this whole blockchain idea is the fact that there is no privacy on a blockchain. Everything is public, at least in the Bitcoin Ethereum world. Everything is public. If you know my Bitcoin address, you can see how much money I've had, you can see how much money I received, you can see how much money I sent, everything. But maybe if you go to Starbucks and you want to, let's say, buy a coffee with crypto, you don't want to have to reveal your whole financial history just to pay for a coffee. Now, this is when, again, banks are kind of cool because banks allow us to keep that stuff secret. And we don't care about the security. They care about the security. They are the ones that shouldn't get hacked and they are the ones that are accountable. So, to conclude, yes, the government can't regulate or can't block. They cannot actually kill a cryptocurrency, but what they can do is prevent you from buying one. So maybe it will be the same. They can literally block some coins. For example, there are some coins that are privacy coins and these coins are actually anonymous. They're actually private and the government is super scared of these coins. And this is why governments are talking to exchanges and saying that in this exchange, you shouldn't sell, for example, that coin. And that's happening. Some exchanges are delisting these coins because of government pressure. So regulation, it can happen. It's already here. We can see the beginning and we have to see where it goes. I think the best we can hope for is that the government is forward thinking and they realize that they could become the next Silicon Valley, for example. If a government plays their cards right with regulations, with verifications and all that stuff, maybe they can foster a crypto ecosystem and maybe that will be good for the country itself. Now, let's move on to scams. Many people ask me the question, what happens if, for example, I give my money to a DeFi project and the project goes away and the developers run away? Who am I going to talk to? The answer is nobody. That's it. Sorry, but is the truth. Scams are here. They are everywhere on the crypto space. And I think it's one of the worst parts about it. There's so many of them and there is literally no accountability. Some exchanges sort of help and sometimes they blacklist some addresses and they block them from being able to trade if the address was involved in some hack or some stuff like that. But the actual answer is there is nothing you can do apart from your own research. Again, in the crypto land, everything is your own responsibility. All the stuff is on you. You have to do the research, you have to look at the project and you have to do all that stuff because really there isn't anybody out there to help you. So the only thing I can say about this problem is that I agree with you 100% if you would say that there are many scams going on in the world, that is 100% true. So I am going to give you the list that I follow or the steps that I follow when I'm looking into a project and I wanna see if it's actually serious or not. First of all, remember that because something is a coin doesn't mean it's valuable. It doesn't take a genius to create a coin. Anybody wow. could copy paste some code and create a coin. Just, just because something is a coin doesn't mean it has value. Number two, you need to learn to spot the people that are just using fancy words to separate you from your money. For example, if you go to a website where it says that they are building a decentralized Oracle protocol with machine learning optimized liquidity pools and you don't understand what that means, then you have three options. One of them is you need to study, you need to do research and understand what those words mean. Second of all, if after you study you realize that that doesn't make any sense, maybe the project is a scam or the idea is super bad. Anyways, if you don't understand it, don't put money there. For example, when I see a coin that maybe I'm interested on, I don't go to their websites first because websites, they never tell you anything. What I do is I go to the code. Maybe I don't understand the whole code, but at least I can check that there is some code. I can see when was the last time they were updated, how active they are, how many people are contributing to that code. Then you go and you look at how the community is working. If the community of a coin is only focused on the price, then maybe you are in the wrong place because those are basically pumps and dumps. People just pump the price and then they sell. So if the community and the team and the code is kind of meh, then maybe I wouldn't put my money there. And something very important that I got also many questions. People ask me, what do you think about this coin? What do you think about that coin? The most important thing, in my opinion, is if you want to put money on a coin, that coin must be decentralized. Because there are many companies that are offering coins. They're just selling coins. They're giving you coins in exchange for something. And just because something is named coin doesn't mean it's a cryptocurrency and it's decentralized. If something is not decentralized, that literally means that they can turn it off at any point. If something is not decentralized, that means that they can print more money, they can take your money, they can change your money, they can do whatever they want. So be very careful of companies offering these sort of things. So the answer to this may be a little bit unsatisfactory and that is the fact that, yeah, scams are here. They're a huge problem 
of the Bitcoin industry and it's all on you. Unfortunately, if somebody hacks a contract and they run away with your money, there is nobody you can go to. There is zero accountability. So far, right now, the crypto industry is like the Wild West. Everybody for itself and we just hope for the best. And before I move on, what happens if a company behind a stable coin goes bye-bye? The answer will be, that the stablecoin will also go bye bye. So, if you're interested in stablecoins and you don't trust any companies, check out a coin called DAI. This coin is a stablecoin, but stable not because of a company, but because of algorithms. They maintain a stablecoin algorithmically. It's crazy. I'm not telling you to get it. I'm not telling you to buy it. Do the research, but it's out there. Now, let's talk about the technical challenges. Bitcoin is slow, Ethereum is slow, they waste a lot of electricity. Those things are all. All right, so I just finished recording the third part of this video, but then I realized that totally it was 27 minutes of content because the third part of the video is about the technical difficulties, which, as you know, I'm super passionate about. So I decided we're going to stop here and we're going to talk about the technical part on the next video where we're going to talk about why Bitcoin and Ethereum are so slow, why they waste so much energy and the solutions that we have for these problems, the new third generation cryptocurrencies like Cardano, Polkadot, Kusama, Cosmos, all that stuff, okay? So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to be happy. Don't forget to eat kimchi. Kamsamnida, sarangheyo. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.